guys, my name's Stuart and welcome to Astro Shed. In this video I want to talk about sensor tilt. It seems to be more and more common these days. Um, I actually tested my camera and I actually do have sensor tilt in mine. And what, what I mean by this is the sensor is not fitted parallel to the front of the camera. Um, there's nothing we can do about that. The sensor's fitted at the factory. Um, if it's slightly off plane, the only way we can deal with it is using a tilt adjuster. Now many cameras, especially the ASIs, come with tilt adjusters built in. My QHY doesn't. The Starlight Express cameras have always had them on the front of theirs and they actually test their cameras before they leave the factory using a laser jig similar to what I'm going to show you in a while. Now this is a DIY home built laser jig just using a few pieces of wood and it's pretty simple to put together. The beauty of this is you can adjust any sensor tilt you've got in the daytime in your own home, in the warm, rather than trying to do it under the night sky, fiddling around with small screws, small allen keys, not knowing which way to adjust the tilt adjuster, not knowing which screws to adjust, it can get quite tedious uh, and quite complicated. I have tried this myself and it's, it's not good. So I saw this idea online, it's not my idea, it was actually an idea I saw from Ollie Penrice on the Stargazers Lounge, he posted a picture of what he'd built and I've just copied that basically and built something similar and I thought I'd show it on here uh, to hopefully help you guys out there if you have got sensor tilt. So how do you know whether you have or not? Well, you can test it under the night sky and just look at your star shapes, see whether you think you've got an issue and then put it on this jig, which I'm going to show you in a bit and test it there. You can just put it straight on the jig and just test it anyway regardless of whether you think you've got bad stars or not just to see whether your sensor has got any tilt in it well there is software you can use ASTAP which is really a plate solving soft software but it does have a CCD inspector built in where it will give you a graphical representation of any sensor tilt and it will also tell you in percentage terms how much you've got I tested around 15 of my images on this and they varied from 10% to 33% of tilt. So I'm not really sure how accurate that software is. The other one, if you use Nina as your image acquisition software, there's a plugin called Hocus Focus, which has actually got a great tool built into that, an aberration inspector, which will again give you a 3D graphical representation of your sensor and whether you've got any tilt uh, and which corners of the sensor are actually tilted. Uh, this it is quite complex. It does give you a lot of numbers that can that can get confusing at times. And again, you've then got to do your adjustments outside uh, on a cold night under the skies, which again can get quite tedious. So, what can we do about it if we know we've got sensor tilt? Well, ideally, you've got to get a tilt adjuster. There's not really any other way of adjusting it. These come in a variety of. Uh, prices from ranging from around £35 up to around £250. Um, the cheaper ones do just the same job, they were just a little bit more difficult to adjust because on a lot of them the screws are on the front of the adjuster so you sometimes have to remove the camera to make the adjustments. I've actually got a Bader one because it fits with my Bader filter slide uh, and that was over £200 but that has the adjustment screws around the outer edge uh, you've got in and out screws which again I'll show you in a bit uh, and it's a lot easier to adjust. So let's get to it then and I'll show you the laser jig that I built. It isn't pretty to look at but it does the job. So uh, have a look at this and see what you think. Okay so this is the laser jig. As you can see it's just four pieces of wood screwed together. Now there's no, no ideal height and there's no ideal width. It doesn't really matter. These are just four pieces of wood that I had lying around that I knocked together and so that's why it's this particular height and this particular width. It could be lower, it could be wider, it doesn't really matter. Then you need a hole on the top, this is a 50mm hole, and two blocks so that when you put the camera on you can rotate the camera 360 degrees in the same spot. I actually leave my filter drawer and obviously the tilt adjuster in place so this is my imaging tray and this screws straight onto the field flattener. Down the bottom here we've got a one milliwatt laser this is out of an old Bader laser collimator. 
with the uh, very technical switch close peg just to hold the button in so that the laser stays on and then the laser is obviously just cable tied to an old scrap piece of metal and then it's pointed up at the sensor now it hasn't got to be banging in the middle of the sensor but you don't want the laser moving away from the sensor when you rotate the camera and then on the bottom here what you will get on this piece of paper is a reflection from the laser you'll get two reflections one will be from the AR glass at the front and one will be from the sensor so then you ask which one is the one that we need to track well the further away the reflective surface the further away from the laser the reflected dot will be so the sensor reflection will be here the AR window will be here and if I had a filter in the filter drawer that would then be even closer so the further away the reflective surface, surface, the closer to the laser the reflection will be. So we're always looking for the one furthest away, which is from the sensor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dim the lights a bit, put the laser on, reflect at the camera and show you what's going on down here with the reflected dots. OK, the laser is now turned on, pointed somewhere near the centre of the sensor. And as you can see, there are two reflected laser dots. It's the one at the bottom of the screen down here that's the reflection from the sensor the one slightly further up is a reflection from the AR window and the idea is this bottom one stays static as you turn the camera through 360 degrees well, what will happen is if you have got sensor tilt as you turn the camera through 360 degrees if you mark the position of the dot as it goes round you will end up with a small circle that will look something like this so as you can see by the series of dots on the paper, I've turned my camera through 360 degrees, roughly around 60 degrees each time, and plotted where the reflective dot had fallen on the paper. If you have sensor tilt, this is what you'll end up with, a small circle of dots. Now to adjust it, what you need to do is get this dot, the bottom dot, on the right hand, far right hand side of the traced circle that you've got. And then with your tilt adjuster on the camera is to adjust the left hand side screw on the opposite side to where you've got the reflected dot. It may not be exactly opposite, it could be round there or it could be here as this one is. But the idea is then to adjust this so that you bring that reflected dot back to the middle of the circle. This will mean that you're adjusting the tilt out. I suggest when you've done this you do another iteration and you'll probably end up with a much smaller circle and then do the same again get the dot to the right hand side of the circle and adjust the left hand screw whatever screw falls on this side if, it, if the screw is slightly here or round the back what may happen is the dot won't go exactly back to the centre it will move to a centre line but it may be slightly above or below the actual centre this is fine it just means that you'll probably need to do another iteration what you'll find after you've finished is that you will have ended up adjusting two out of the three screws. This is why it's a good idea to make a note of the ones you've adjusted, i.e. numbering them one, two and three, and each time you adjust one, make a note of which one you adjusted. In my case, I adjusted numbers two and three, approximately one tenth of a millimetre, and this removed all the tilt that I had in my sensor, which started off with a circle like this, and ended up with a single dot like that so as you can see all the tilt was adjusted out so I hope that was some use to you I hope I explained it okay and it was easy enough to follow it is quite a simple procedure but if you do have any questions please leave them in the comments below and if you think this video was useful and you enjoyed it well you know what to do thanks for watching clear skies and catch you again soon.